a very happy Easter to you all. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Well, since we last met, I do hope and pray that you and your family have kept safe and well. It is a very happy Easter to you all from the Mance family here in uh, Garva. Uh, I'm in the study, First Garva Mance, and Elaine and Sarah send their Easter good wishes to you all as well as the families of First Garva, First Dumbo, and the residents and staff of Trinity House gathered together to worship God on this Resurrection Day, the Lord's Day, when we celebrate He is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. I share with you the words of uh, 1 Peter uh, chapter 1 and verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice. Amen. And let us rejoice as we lift our voices in worship and praise with this very rousing Easter morning hymn, See What a Morning. See what a morning, what a lovely rousing Easter morning hymn where we're reminded that death is dead, love has won, Christ has conquered and we shall reign with him. For he lives, Christ is risen from the dead. Let us come before God now in prayer. Let us pray. Exalted and resurrected Lord Jesus, we join together with all the saints throughout the world and indeed heaven, acclaiming hope and great joy. For you are risen, you are risen indeed. Hallelujah. You have risen from the dead and this good news changes everything. Because of your resurrection, for those who believe, we are neither afraid to die or to live. We are not hapless wanderers on earth. Rather, we are hope-filled children of God. We are no longer enslaved to our sins. We are now clothed in your righteousness and washed by your blood. Those who've gone to sleep in you aren't slumbering in the void. They're rejoicing in your presence. Hallelujah. 
And because of your resurrection, you are already reigning as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. All evil dominions, wicked authorities and malevolent powers now stand defeated. And one day they will be fully eradicated. Hallelujah. Jesus, your death is the death of death. And your resurrection gives us hope in all things, even in the face of death, even in the face of COVID-19. For you died for our sins, and you've been raised for our justification. Oh, the wonder, the marvel, and the gratitude that should fill our hearts this Easter morning. For we are forgiven, we are beloved, and we are yours through faith in Christ. Hallelujah. So in light of this living hope, and compelling love, this measureless grace and inter- eternal inheritance, free us, we pray, for spending the rest of our days living and loving to your glory. And we pray these are prayers and offer you our Easter worship in your resurrected and reigning name, Jesus. Amen. One, two, three, four, five Easter eggs. I love chocolate. Mm. Oh, we're recording. Of course, boys and girls, Easter means a lot more than Easter bonnets, Easter chicks, and chocolate Easter eggs. These are things that remind us of Easter, but not the true meaning of Easter. I've got somebody who is joining me in the studio this morning, uh, live. Join me from the chicken coop. And it is Henrietta, as you saw in our earlier videos a week or two ago, we at the Mance have got five new hens who are laying steadily each morning for us lovely fresh eggs. And so this morning, um, joining me in the study here is uh, Henrietta. And lovely for you to be with us, Henrietta, this morning. Thank you for being with us and coming to say Happy Easter to all the boys and girls of uh, First Garva and First Dumbo. Now, of course, <coughs> uh, you have a very important job to do, haven't you? And that is keeping us supplied with lovely fresh eggs every morning. Of course, a mother hen will sit on her eggs for a few weeks until you know what happens. That's right, in a few weeks time, the eggs begin to crack open and a little baby chick comes out. And an egg means new life. It reminds us that there is a new life inside that can come out. And so we celebrate Easter Sunday because that is the day that Jesus came out of the grave and he is alive. And this morning I brought uh, with me Henrietta and she has just laid an egg live in the, the, the study this morning. And this is a very special Easter egg. Not because I'm going to boil it or scramble it or poach it and have it for my breakfast. The reason why this is a very special Easter egg is this. It's because it is empty. The egg is empty. And this is why it is a real Easter egg. It reminds us that on Easter Sunday, when Jesus' followers went to his tomb, just as he said, they found it empty. And the angel was there to tell them, he is not here. He has risen, just as he said. The grave is empty. Jesus isn't in there. He is alive, and because he is alive, we too can have new life in him when we place our faith and trust in Jesus. Amen. And now we come to our shout outs. And first up, we've got a beautiful rainbow picture rising over First and Bow Church, sent in to us by Louise Brown. Thank you, Louise, and claim the rainbow back for God. Beautiful rainbow picture coloured in here for us by Lucy Holmes. God keeps his promises. Keep sending the pictures in, Lucy. Great colouring in. We've got a lovely sketch here of Golgotha and the cross at Calvary, sent in by Sophie Henderson of First Dumbo. A lovely sketch there, Sophie. Well done. 
and Molly McFarland has coloured in a beautiful picture telling us to be kind. A great reminder that we need to be kind to one another as we spend a lot of time indoors during lockdown with our families. Beautiful picture drawn by Caden. He's got a big thank you with Postman Pat. Big thank you to all our delivery workers such as our postmen and women. A very happy birthday to Olivia and Ruben from First Dumbo. It was their fifth birthday yesterday, Easter Saturday. Many happy returns to you. And a big happy birthday to Jacob McNeil. He'll be celebrating his birthday tomorrow, Easter Monday, and he's pictured there with his mum, Joanne. And now we've got Bobby and Jack on the farm with a newborn lamb. Signs of spring, signs of Easter all around. Great to see you boys. Uh, be blessed. Well, boys and girls, thank you so much for engaging with our online worship service week by week and for sending in all of your lovely photographs and drawings which you have been completing during the week. And do remember that you can go onto our church website and there you can download worksheets uh, to complete throughout the week and during the service there's colouring in pages and also uh, activity sheets as well for some of the older ones too. And also I wonder if you've spotted uh, a number of differences in the video this week compared to last week. There have been two of them. I wonder what they are. Can you see them on screen at the minute? Well the first one is this. What about this? If you need your hair cut badly, come to Garva and the first Garva months. My wife took the clippers to uh, my hair during the week and gave me a number one all over, so I haven't much left. But it's a good Balamina haircut. I'm married to a Balamina girl and uh, this will last me a few weeks during the lockdown. Second change, what is it? What's the other change in the picture? Well, last week we had Billy the Bible sitting up in the bookshelf around here somewhere and he's having a rest this week and you can see Noah and his ark and we might see a little bit more of that on a Sunday or two's time when we come to think about Noah, the story of Noah again. So do please keep in sending your drawings and pictures. Love to be uh, interacting with you and hearing how you're all getting on throughout the week. And now we're going to enjoy your children's song which I think is good news, good news. It is good news, good news to all the world. forget that face, Andy McClarty. This is a special announcement for Andy. Andy very generously supports the work of Mamillan Cancer Appeal throughout the year with various plant sales. Andy has got polytunnels coming down with plants which he can no longer sell because of the lockdown. He's able to deliver them to you if you'd like to order any plants. You can give him a call. His number will be on the screen. You can find his details also on Facebook. Please support Andy. Let's buy these plants and support the work of the Millen Cancer Appeal during this lockdown time when many charities are struggling to raise funds at this time. Thank you for your generosity.
We're going to again pray. We're going to pray for the needs of our world through our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. God our Father, on this glorious Easter day, we come together to offer praise and adoration for Jesus. Jesus risen. Jesus alive. Jesus powerful. Jesus victorious. Jesus, the salvation of the world. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Lord, without the resurrection of your Son, our faith would be empty and without hope. But he is alive and we rejoice in the knowledge that in Jesus all that separates, injures and destroys has been overcome by that which unites and heals and creates. We pray for your church, that in these days when we cannot physically meet together, you would bring blessing through its use of technology to broadcast the good news wide and far, that good news of the gospel. May our time wor worshipping you virtually give us an extra longing to worship together again physically in our meeting houses. We pray that your spirit may guide and strengthen all of us in your mission, within our own communities and to the world outside, in whatever way we can, each contribute. And we pray that day by day we may draw closer to you, experiencing your infinite love and protection for us and our families. Lord, on this special day, grant us peace in your world for countries where there is war and communities that are broken. We remember today those involved in conflicts around the world, in lands such as Syria, Iraq and Afghanistan. We pray that in these difficult days that they may know your peace. And we pray for all who seek to bring peace to a troubled world and for all service personnel in active duty around the world. We ask that you would keep them safe until they return home to their families and those whom they love. We pray for those living in our own country experiencing deprivation due to being unemployed at this time. We pray, Lord, that you would provide for them. May they know during their struggles that you're always with them in their suffering and will follow them step by step. Lord, we pray for ourselves. You know the needs of human life. And as we seek to live our lives according to your example, help us by your presence to overcome our hasty speech that hurts others, to be free from greed and selfishness, from pride and jealousy that spoil our life. Help us to curb our temper, to be free from moodiness and wanting our own way. And let your presence help us to care about the feelings of others so that we might be gentle and ready to say sorry, especially when we spend time at home because of the virus lockdown. You know us, Lord. Bring out the best in us, we pray, so that our lives may reflect your way for the world. And we pray for those in your world who are in need and ask that you would look with pity upon those who suffer, especially those stricken with coronavirus. We pray that you would heal their infirmities, for the lonely that in you they would discover the perfect friend, for the bereaved that in the midst of their unmeasurable loss they would know the depths of your love and the sure and certain knowledge that you turn our darkness into light and in your light shall we see light. We pray for your encouragement and help, courage and protection to be upon our doctors and nurses and carers. So many of them, Heavenly Father, making sacrifices, having to live separate from their families in order to shield and protect them from the virus. Bless them, we pray. We pray for medical researchers that through their skill and insights too, that many will be restored to health and a vaccine found. And we pray in our prayers for our Prime Minister that he would know your healing touch and also the truth and hope of the Gospel. And for those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies, that they would make wise decisions. Ever-living God, help us now to celebrate our joy in the resurrection of Jesus, to express in our lives the love that we celebrate. Death cannot hold the Lord of life. New life for him means new life for all who believe in Christ. O oh, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your risen Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we are going to have Susan and Kate McCarthy from First and Bow, and they're going to minister to us with the beautiful piece, especially recorded for this Easter day, Christ, our hope in life and death.
Thank you again to Susan and Kate for ministering to us with the beautiful words of that last piece, Christ, our hope in life and death. We're now going to turn to the precious truth of God as we read together from the New Testament and the first gospel, Matthew's gospel, chapter 28, beginning to read at verse 1. We read today of the resurrection of Jesus. And if your Bible is numbered the same as mine, you'll find it on page 1000. Matthew chapter 28 beginning to read at verse 1. After the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord had come down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat in it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, he is risen. Just as he said, Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee, where you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Amen and thanks be to God for this precious reading of his truth and we are going to reflect upon that reading now as we raise our voices as we sing together the words of our next hymn Christ the Lord is risen today. Death is now. 
Christ the Lord is risen today, I hope that you enjoy that traditional Easter hymn. What do you think is the most important event in human history? There are so many opinions on this subject and many different incidents in history have had a tremendous influence on the course of humanity. We are living in history making days too in the midst of this pandemic. However, there is one event in history that is unparalleled upon its effect on the world. And that was the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that first Easter Sunday. Nothing like it had happened before, nor has anything equaled it since. When Jesus rose from the grave, the impact was felt immediately, and it has continued to reverberate throughout the world. Although people had previously been raised from the dead by God's power, such as Lazarus and Jairus' daughter, they all eventually died once more. But Jesus, Jesus was raised immortal, never to die again, because he was not just a man, but God in human flesh. Three days after Jesus' death on the cross, Mary, the mother of James, Mary Magdalene and Salome made their way to the garden tomb to pay their respects and anoint Jesus' body. Imagine for a moment how broken-hearted, fearful and disillusioned these faithful women must have been. Perhaps their heartbreak is all too easy for you to understand today because you've also experienced loss in your life. You've been there too, maybe even in recent days. You understand what it's like to feel pain and loss and sorrow, unsure of which way to turn or what's going to happen next without your loved one in your life. Today you need encouragement and assurance that everything is going to be all right. Let the Easter story speak into your heart today. For when we think about Easter, we should recall that the lives of those women who visited the empty tomb were changed the moment they looked into the tomb. Our reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verses 5 to 7, tells us that the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. For I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. The tomb was and still is empty. What an awesome truth for us to cling to, no matter what our situation or circumstance. Even in the midst of this global pandemic, when all seemed lost, Jesus Christ defeated death and rose victoriously from the grave. Likewise, Jesus can lead you and me to triumph in every trial, regardless of how desperate things may appear initially. For Jesus has the victory. Jesus has victory over COVID-19 too. The tomb was and still is empty. That's the good news in the midst of all the bad news today. What an awesome truth for us to cling to, no matter what our situation. The assurance of Jesus' resurrection should fill your heart with hope and joy on this Easter Sunday, this resurrection day. So what is it that makes Christ's victory over the grave so encouraging for you and for me? Well, first of all, Christ's victory over the grave gives us hope because Jesus is alive and is seated at the Father's right hand, looking out for you and me. Hebrews 7 verse 25 says, Therefore he, Jesus, is able to save completely those who come to God through him, because he always lives to intercede for them. We don't serve a prophet who is dead and buried and unable to help us in our time of need. The risen Saviour is active on our behalf, leading us, providing for us, defending us at every turn throughout our lives. Many of us are stunned, trying to keep up with daily news about the coronavirus, the news of our Prime Minister being in intensive care, and the necessary changes that this virus has had upon our lives. We might be terribly afraid both for our own well-being and the health of those we love. 
And here in the Easter story, we get the reminder we need from God and from his word that he cares, he knows and he loves us. We learn from the psalmist that we have a saviour who's looking out for us. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In our fear and in our confusion, God is with us. We are never alone. Even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we need not fear. I don't read this as saying nothing bad will ever happen to us. Rather, this is divine assurance that in our trials and tribulations, even in the journey of death, God is with us. We are never alone. On the third day after his death, Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, showing the triumph of God's love. As Easter reminds us, God's love is stronger than sin. God's love is stronger than Satan. God's love is stronger even than death. Because you see, Jesus has destroyed death at the cross and the empty tomb. And we can walk through the valley of the shadow of death or face the spread of the coronavirus knowing that in the end, God's love is stronger than our fears. God's love is stronger than anything that we might face. Now, it's not wrong to be afraid. That's a healthy response to the threats we face. It makes us take measures to protect ourselves and keep ourselves safe. But we can, by God's grace, face our fears so that our hearts and our lives are ruled by hope and love and not overwhelmed by fear. So let's feed our faith and not fuel our fail fears in these difficult days. So Christ's victory over the grave gives us hope because Jesus is alive and is seated at the Father's right hand, interceding for us, looking out for you and me. Christ's victory over the grave, secondly, fills us with confidence because it is a guarantee of our life eternal for the believer. We have the undeniable evidence that God keeps his promise of salvation to us. Romans 6 verses 4 and 5 explains, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life if we have been united with him like this in his death. We will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. Since Jesus lives, it is certain that we who are believers will as well, and so will all our loved ones who believe in him. That's why Easter is an awesome reason for celebration for the Christian. The resurrection is at the very heart of the Christian faith. Jesus died in our place at the cross. Jesus bore the penalty for our sin at the cross. Jesus triumphed over the forces of Satan and evil at the cross. And Jesus revealed the humble and sacrificial love of God for the world to win our hearts and our trust at the cross. But it didn't end there at the cross. Then, then on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus rose from the dead conquering sin. Jesus rose from the dead indicating the sacrifice for sin and establishing a new hope for the believer. And what is that hope? Well, we learn of that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. But Christ has indeed been risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in his own turn, Christ, the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Since Jesus is the first fruits from among the dead, here then is the promise of more resurrections to come. Ours, yours and mine. Those who belong to him when Jesus comes again. So because of Easter, our lives as believers are changed. We're no longer under condemnation because Jesus was condemned in our place at the cross. We are no longer needing to fear death because Jesus has proven that death is defeated through the empty tomb. We are no longer living in darkness and confusion about God because we know just how much he loves us, how far he would go to redeem us, 
and how absolute is his victory over all that is against us. Christ's victory over the grave fills us with confidence because it is a guarantee of our eternal life for the believer. And thirdly and finally, Christ's victory over the grave proves our Saviour kept his pledge to reconcile us to the Father so we know he will keep every other promise he has made to us. Romans 8, 31 and 32 reminds us, What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Dear friends, there's nothing we could ever need or encounter that requires more power to overcome than what Jesus experienced on the cross and in the grave. No matter what you face, the Lord is able to help you through it. Does your hope appear lost today? Have you experienced some trial, discouragement or loss in life that has left you with heartache or pain? Are you struggling with confusion or uncertainty in the midst of this coronavirus, not knowing which way to turn or what will happen to you or your loved ones in the coming days, weeks or months that lie ahead? If so, today look to the empty tomb and be encouraged and find the assurance that everything is in God's hands. Your Saviour is alive. Your Saviour is interceding on your behalf. So there's absolutely nothing in this world, nothing, that should ever take away your joy and confidence in God's perfect promises and provision for you. You see, Jesus is the Son of God and if anyone comes to him, we get his Father as our Father. We get his Spirit as our Spirit. We get his victory over death as our victory over death. We get his future as our future. We get his brothers and sisters in the church as our brothers and sisters in the church. Coming to Jesus means entering his family now and forevermore. What incredible promises these are. Whatever else this day may be, Easter will not really be Easter for you until you make your choice and take your stand for Jesus Christ as your risen Saviour and Lord. There's an old gospel hymn called Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. It's a a mission hall one. And one of the verses contains this phrase. There's a light in the valley of death now for me since Jesus came into my heart and the gates of the city beyond I can see since Jesus came into my heart. And that light in the valley of death is the light of Jesus who stands knocking at the door of your heart today. Do you know him? I pray you will open the door of your heart and let him in through faith and trust. You will never regret that decision. And when death finally comes our way, it won't be death at all, but an entrance into life everlasting. May God grant you grace to believe and make you restless until you find your rest in him. Jesus is bigger than death. He really did rise. Happy Easter, happy Resurrection Day, and let us pray. Lord Jesus, what would we do with you this Easter day? Where could we go but to the Lord? You alone have the words of eternal life. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. I pray for those who stand on that sinking sand today. May they find the rock of ages. Thank you for the hope we have, hope that goes beyond the grave, because you are risen, you are risen indeed, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And we're going to draw our Easter morning service to a close with the words of our final hymn, a beautiful piece which I hope that you will enjoy and will minister to your soul this resurrection day. What gift of grace is Jesus? my Redeemer.
Well, I do hope and pray that you have been ministered to on this Easter Sunday as we have worshipped God together. I trust and pray that you will have been encouraged, that you will be reminded of the hope we have in the risen Saviour. Until we meet again next Lord's Day, keep safe and well and be blessed. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, risen from the dead and alive forevermore, stand in our midst today as in the upper room and speak your peace into our hearts and minds and send us out into the world as your witnesses to the glory of your precious name and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the risen Son and the Holy Spirit be with you all this Easter day and forevermore. Amen. God bless. I'll see you next week. Music